I am going to show images of Parkinson's disease, which is a neurodegenerative disease with mainly motor signs, such as a tremor and cockwheel rigidity. Parkinson's disease is caused by loss of dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra. The substantia nigra is located in the midbrain, just anterior of the red nucleus. And these are also images of the midbrain of a healthy volunteer at 7 Tesla with a lot of detail and 3 Tesla as is usually done in clinical practice. And on the 7 Tesla images you can see that the substantia nigra consists of two different parts. On the anterior and inferior side is the pars reticulata with inhibitory GABAergic neurons. And behind that is the pars compacta, which is located dorsal and superior with the dopaminergic neurons that get lost in Parkinson's disease. And the dopaminergic neurons are slightly hyperintensed on T2-weighted images. On the three Tesla images, when there is loss of the dopaminergic neurons that are slightly hyperintensed, this might lead to blurring of the boundary between the red nucleus and the also hypo-intense reticulate part of the substantia nigra. On seven Tesla on the lower midbrain level, you can also see that there is hyperintense signal of the dopaminergic neurons of the ventral tegmental area that connects to the limbic system. And before we go into detail to the loss of the neurons in Parkinson's disease, I want to make some comments on the origin of the dopaminergic neurons. And this is a 10-day-old mouse embryo. And if you've seen the previous vlogs about the cortical development, you might remember that I divided three steps in the development of the supratentorial brain, proliferation, migration and organization, which is easy to remember because it's three steps and because it rhymes. And I did this for the purpose of simplicity. But in reality, there's one very important step that comes before the proliferation, and that is called patterning. And patterning means that each neuron in this neural tube has to know where it is and what it has to become. So the telencephalic neurons have to become cortex, whereas the hindbrain has to become brainstem and cerebellum, etc. And there are several... Um, signaling molecules that are secreted and this gives kind of a gradient and so at each location there is a unique combination of molecules and then the cell knows which genes it has to activate. So in the brain there is the floor plate on the anterior side of the neural tube that secretes sonic hedgehog in blue. Then there's the ismic organizer, that is the midbrain hindbrain boundary, that secretes OTX for the rostral part in yellow and GBX2 in orange for the hindbrain. And then there's a uh, wind uh, in red that borders the ismic organizer. And then there are several regions of fibroblastic growth factor. And low in the dying cephalon, high in the midbrain, there's this unique combination of wind, fibroblastic growth factor, and sonic hedgehog, which give rise to the dopamine precursors. And for the ones interested, the brownish thing are the serotonin precursors. So from this dopaminergic region, both the substantia nigra and the ventral tegmental area arise. And in Parkinson's disease, there is loss of the dopaminergic neurons that are also a little bit pigmented. So this is a normal midbrain, and this is a midbrain with Parkinson with some iron deposition. And in the cells that um, are diseased, 
there's also accumulation of a protein called alpha synuclein and this gives the formation of Lewy bodies that was already described in Nature 1997. And these Lewy bodies are the hallmark of Parkinson's disease. So Parkinson's disease is not a tauopathy like Alzheimer's disease or frontotemporal dementia. The dopaminergic neurons are not distributed evenly in the pars compacta of the substantia nigra, but there are nigrosomes where there are more dopaminergic neurons, and the largest nigrosome is nigrosome 1, which you can see here outlined in orange. These are again seven Tesla images going from cranial to caudal, and you can see that there are seven, that there are five different nigrosomes, and that the substantia nigra extends very inferior until the level of the inferior colliculus, so much lower than you might think. And this nigrosome 1 gives on the seven Tesla images the appearance of a swallow tail uh, to the substantia nigra with this bifid dorsal part. And in Parkinson's disease, there's loss of the swallow tail. And these are three Tesla images that are usually used in clinical practice. And on the right side, in this patient with Parkinson's disease, there's loss of the swallow tail, and on the left side, the swallow tail is a little bit abnormal because the nigrosome seems smaller. And this corresponded to the clinical symptoms because the clinical motor score on the right side was 1 and on the left side was 4. And the substantia nigra in the midbrain is connected to the ipsilateral striate, so the putamen and caudate, and the ipsilateral motor cortex. And this explains if there are problems with the striate and the putamen, you can have symptoms similar to Parkinson's disease with Parkinsonism. And we're going to discuss that next time when we look at multi-system atrophy.